And I want to try to be a help to you. Luke chapter number 17. Let me figure this thing out here. We stand in reverence to the Word of God, Luke chapter number 17, if you will. Look with me down in uh, verse number 7. The Bible says, But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say to him by and by, when he's come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say to him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunk him, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded of him? I trow not. So likewise, when you have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come here in prayer today. Thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the folks that are here. God, I know without you today I can do nothing, Lord. I'm asking, Lord, for your grace. I'm asking for unction. I'm asking, Lord Jesus, for your leadership to preach the things that you've laid upon my heart to share this morning. May anybody here lost, save them before they leave here today. That may be backslid, Lord, draw them back to you. Lord, this is a good day for us, Lord, to get ourselves in the right place with you. Lord, when we maintain that walk and that relationship, Lord, begin speaking to our hearts, Lord, we pray. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You be seated. Thank you for the reverence of the word of God. And uh, as I said already, this is the Sunday before Memorial Day. And so I, I was thinking about this. I, I, I realize in uh, probably about 15 years, I've never preached a Memorial Day service at Elmira uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, usually if I'm here, I have somebody else preach it. And, uh, and most years I've been out of town, honestly. Uh, and so uh, when I have opportunity to preach, I think it's more necessary today than ever when we think about this day. Because some people think Memorial Day is just about parades or just about having a cookout or just about having a three-day weekend, which uh, there's nothing wrong with any of those things. And, and I hope if you've got those things that you enjoy them, uh, but certainly uh, don't even enjoy them at the expense of overlooking what the day means and what we're representing here. And I, I do want to say that Memorial Day is not necessarily a religious holiday. It's, it's a... A uh, secular holiday, I guess you would say, in some senses. I, I mean, it's it's uh, like Veterans Day or Fourth of July. They're they're uh, patriotic holidays, certainly American holidays. But I think if we look at it from the eyes of the Christian, they certainly uh, could be religious holidays for us. I think it is a, a spiritual holiday because uh, Memorial Day refers to memory and uh, remembering things. And I think the Bible has a lot to say about remembering things. As a matter of fact, that's what the whole book of Deuteronomy is about. Remembering what God said. And uh, not only that, when Joshua crossed the River Jordan there, he made them set up 12 memorial stones for a remembrance of what God done for them over there. And, and so uh, the Bible tells us that we need to remember. As a matter of fact, uh, communion, which we'll observe tonight, as written the Word of God across this table here, this do in remembrance of me. It's a memorial that we do, that we observe, that we celebrate. And, and so I, I would like to say that in some ways a Memorial Day would certainly be a spiritual or religious holiday. The origins of Memorial Day, I guess, started, uh, in, in best I can find, back in 1868 on May 30th. Uh, it was set aside as a day designated for the purpose of, of uh, strewing flowers or decorating the graves of comrades that died in defense of the country. And uh, that's the, uh, the national holiday was set aside on May 30th. Traditionally, they said that it started back in 1863 in Columbus, Mississippi, where a woman was decorating the graves of her two sons that had died defending the Southland. And after she decorated the graves of her two sons, she walked over to two other graves down in the corner of that cemetery and placed flowers on them. And some people hollered at him and said, what do you think you're doing? And, and they said, uh, those graves there are un two Union soldiers. And the woman said, I know, I know. She said, but I also know that up in, uh, north there's a mother or a wife up there uh, that's mourning for their loss just like we're mourning for ours. Amen. And so Memorial Day set aside to remember and honor those that gave their life. Veterans Days are for those that are living. Memorial Days are for those that gave their lives so we could have freedom. And so that we can meet today. I do want to say this freedom's never been free. It never will be free. 
Freedom always costs something. It always costs somebody something. It, freedom's not only always uh, uh, never free, it's also never guaranteed. Amen. We better realize in the United States of America that our freedoms are not guaranteed. Amen. We can lose them at any day. And so it's got to be fought for and it's got to be protected. And so today, uh, thinking about that, we need to remember our fallen. You say, what are you talking about the fallen? Well, we're talking about uh, the 25,324 that gave their lives in the Revolutionary War. We're talking about the 98,332 that died in the Civil War. We're talking about the 116,710 that died in World War I. We're talking about the 407,316 that died in World War II. We're talking about the 6,603 that died in Normandy on D-Day. We're talking about the 54,500 46 that died in the Korean War. We're talking about the 58,098 that died in Vietnam, though 293 that died in the first Gulf War, the 4,424 that died in the Iraq War, the uh, 1,461 that died in Afghanistan. That's what we're talking about. Amen. We're talking about those that stood, that are currently standing on the lines while you and I are standing in and sitting in our churches today, Amen. enjoying the freedom we have, and they're out there defending it. And so I want you to understand that uh, uh, freedom has never been free. Right. It always costs somebody something. I've got a a poem here. It's called It's the Soldier. It's not mine. Charles Prince wrote it, but it says that it's the soldier, not the minister, who's given us freedom of religion. It's the soldier, not the reporter, that's given us the freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the poet, that's given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier, not the campus organizers, that's given us the freedom to protest. It's the soldier, not the lawyer, that's given us the right to a fair trial. It's the soldier, not the politician, that's given us the right to vote. It's the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, that gives you the right to burn the flag. Amen. It's the soldier that has granted us the ability to be here. The sentiment more and more on Memorial Day is anti-war, anti-soldier, anti-American. That's the world we live in today. I want you to realize that even of us that know better, uh, give little thought or regard to exactly what this day represents. And, and so uh, you, you can have a day off and you can have a cookout and you can enjoy your family while they're over there with rifles in hand trying to make sure that you can continue to do what you're doing here today. I, I remember reading a story, and, and I'll share it with you today just because I, I like the sentiment of the story. It's a story that came out a few years ago, uh, but Luke Air Force Base in Phoenix, Arizona uh, has been there for years. Well, what's happened in Phoenix, Arizona is, is communities have begun to be built around that Air Force Base, and, and so the people that's building their houses in Phoenix, they're complaining because all the noise that comes from off the Air Force Base. And so somebody in Phoenix wrote an article, an editorial in the paper, and uh, questioning some things that happened at Luke's Air Force Base. And the complaint said this, to whom do we thank for the morning air show? Last Wednesday at precisely 9-11 a.m., a tight formation of four F-16 jets made a low pass over the Arrowhead Mall, continuing west over Bell Road at approximately 500 feet. Imagine our good fortune. Do the Tom Cruise wannabes feel we need this wake-up call, or were they trying to impress the cashiers at Mervyn's early bird special? Any response would be appreciated. Well, next week in the paper, there was a response. The response uh, uh, come from Lieutenant Colonel Scott Pleas. Lieutenant Colonel said, regarding the wake-up call from Luke's Jets on June 15th at precisely 9.12 a.m., a perfectly timed four-ship flyby of F-16s from the 63rd Fighter Squadron at Luke Air Force Base flew over the grave of Captain Jeremy Freswell. Captain Fresquez was an Air Force officer who had previously stationed at Luke Air Force Base and was killed in Iraq on May 30th, Memorial Day. At 9 a.m. on June 15th, his family and friends were gathered at Sunland Memorial Park in Sun City to mourn the loss of a husband and son and friend. Based on the letter writer's recount of the flyby and because of the jet noise, I'm sure you didn't hear the 21-gun salute, the playing of taps, or my words to the widow and the parents of Captain Fresquez as I gave them their son's flag on behalf of the United States of America and those veterans and servicemen and women who understand the sacrifices they endured. A four-ship flyby is a display of respect the Air Force gives to those that give their life in defense of freedom. We are professional aviators and take our job seriously. And on June 15th, what the letter writer witnessed was four officers lining up to pay their ultimate respect. 
The letter writer asks, to whom do we thank for the morning air show? The 56 fighter wing will make the call for you and forward your thanks to the widow and the parents of Captain Fresquez and thank them for you, for it was in their honor that my pilots flew the most honorable formation of their life, signed Lieutenant Colonel Place. Amen. Amen. The writer wrote next week and apologized. Yeah. It, it's amazing. Somebody added the tagline to that later. It says, only two divining forces ever offered to die for you, Jesus Christ and the American soul. Amen. 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 And so I want you to understand that in our text today, with what we've read here and what I want to focus on this morning, it's speaking of servitude. It's speaking of, of doing what you're commanded to do. And then ultimately when it comes down to it, the, the response to that would be to say, verse number 10, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. It says in those verses there, it says, which of you uh, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say to him, uh, uh, by and by, come from the field and go and sit down? So we wouldn't say that. But we'll tell them to come from the field and make our meal so we can sit down and so we can enjoy ourselves. And then after we've enjoyed ourselves, then they can sit down and enjoy themselves. It says in verse number 10, do, do you thank the servant for what he's done? Well, he said, I, he said, I trow not because he's simply doing what is his duty to do. I think that's the sentiment of our military today. They're doing what it's their duty to do. They're doing what they've been ca called upon to do. And, and I don't think it would take too much uh, for, for us to understand uh, what the duty was. Do you know what the oath of enlistment is for the United States military? The oath of enlistment says, I, whatever your name is, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the officers appointed over me according to the regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God. Amen. That is the oath of enlistment for the U.S. military. Now, I don't think I have to go very far today to try to tell you what the soldier's duty is and what they do. I certainly hope that I do not. But I was interested this morning because I, I found not just the oath of enlistment of the United States military, but I found the oath of U.S. citizenship and the U, uh, allegiance to the U.S. Constitution. Do you know what it says? It says, I hereby declare an oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure and all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or a citizen. That I, this is for citizenship, will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law. That I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by law. That I will perform the work of national importance under civilian direction when required by law. And that I will take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of invasion. So help me God in acknowledgement whereof I hereto affix my signature. Do you see that for citizenship? Citizenship says I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Amen. Amen. I want you to realize it's easy for me to stand here today and talk about the duty of the U.S. military, but I want to talk about your duty in response to what they do and how we ought to respond to those that are giving their lives so that we can enjoy our lives. So that we can uh, uh, work and, and pray and, and play and enjoy ourselves. And so I just got three things this morning uh, that I think we need to do. What our duty is. The first duty that I believe we got is to remember. Remember. I, I think the biggest problem in America is we tend to forget our past. And if we forget our past, we are doomed to repeat it. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. That's the definition of insanity. We've got to realize that there's an overwhelming push today by some uh, in the United States of America to tear down our monuments and our memorials, uh, to change the textbooks at school, and pretend the past never happened. Amen. And they're teaching a generation today uh, a new history that has nothing to do with old history. I think we need to know where we come from. Amen? I think there's something to be said about us uh, uh, knowing those that gave our lives, those that fought, those that shed blood. And the reason why they done it. Amen? you got to understand this started way back when uh, uh, people were uh, over in Europe and they didn't have the right to worship God as they choose. It's underneath the Church of England and they were ruling there. But they had an ideal. They had an ideal that they were some freedom. They had an ideal that they could serve God if they could just get away. They loaded up in ships at, their, uh, at the risk of their own 
worship God. I, I want you to realize that America was founded on the premise that people could freely worship God. Amen. It was not built upon uh, uh, some governmental principle. It was not founded upon uh, somebody who won't rule themselves. It was founded upon uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you let our school system and our colleges undermine that fact because they're trying to teach our kids. That's not why we're here, but it's the only reason we're here. Amen. Amen. I want you to realize that uh, freedom is not uh, gained by treaties and it's not gained by peace accord, but freedom is gained uh, uh, by blood uh, uh, that's been shed down through the ages. Blood bought your freedom. Uh, that's what it took. Patrick Henry said, you give me liberty or you give me death. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you today, some people took that to the extreme because they believe in your right to be able to sit here. They believe in your right to be able to protest. They believe in your right to be able to worship. They believe in your right to live free. And so they freely and willingly go put their lives on the line so you and I can do this. And yet we're more concerned about whether they're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs tomorrow than about our soldiers that pay the price. Jesus told the church in Ephesus over there, one thing Jesus told them in Revelation 20, he said, remember from whence thou art fallen and repent and do thy first work. In essence, Jesus said, you better remember where you come from. Yeah. You better remember where you were. Let me tell you something, America today or the ideology in the United States of America today is not America. As a matter of fact, it's anti-American. We're standing on the streets right now asking for the right to kill babies uh, uh, without no regard for the life that's in there. And I want to tell you something right now. You think this uh, 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 killing babies through Roe versus Wade and this uh, uh, baby formula shortage ain't got the same thing to do. Don't you think for one second if they're willing to kill them in the womb, they won't starve them after they've been born. I'm telling you something right now. Don't you think for one second that this ain't about, you know what they're trying to do? Uh, they're trying to do it in our school systems and going and they're telling it. And I, I want you to understand something right now. I realize there's school teachers in here and thank God for Christian school teachers here. I'm not being critical to them. I'm being critical to the system uh, that is telling them uh, uh, that this is what we've got to do. Uh, uh, we're teaching critical race theory. Uh, uh, we're teaching that uh, alternative lifestyle. And they say that you as a parent ain't got no right to, uh, to tell your kids uh, uh, that it's up to the teachers to teach your kids that you ain't got no business in your kids' life. Excuse me. Amen. I'm back to different. Amen. Amen. And I, hey, God gave me those kids and I will raise them kids in the way that God has shown me to raise them. Uh, and I'll bring them, bring them up in the fear and admonition of God. Amen. And I'll tell them that sin's wrong. Uh, I'll tell them that killing babies is wrong. I'll tell them that marrying men, uh, being married men, women marrying women is wrong. Amen. Amen. It's wrong. It's wrong. It'll always be wrong. Amen. But we got just enough freedom to where we can just do what we want to, don't we? I want you to realize right now that we need to go back and remember what it was. I'm talking about back in time, remember what it was that these people were dealing with that made war and bloodshed necessary for us to have what we have today. And it's got no less. I hear them talking. We need to sit down and we need to discuss this. Some of these dictators that live in the world, they ain't going to sit down and discuss nothing. They'd rather see you dad as talk to you. You understand? Uh, we've got to understand what's going on. I, I'll be honest with you. I feel like the real reason we can't remember today because we never knew it in the first place. I'd venture to say, and I'm not going to do it today because I ain't trying to embarrass anybody, but I'd venture to say there's a good number of you sitting in this church right now that have no idea what the Constitution of the United States says. So how in the world are you going to say, I, I, I pledge to uphold the Constitution of the United States against enemies foreign and domestic when you don't even know what it says? All you're concerned about in West Virginia is if you've got the right to bear arms. Oh, you've got a lot more rights than that. Yeah. But that's all you're hung up on. Won't you figure out what it says? Then you'll realize up from the, uh, uh, the White House and the, uh, the Congress and the Senate building all the way down to the State House that these people ain't doing their job. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, when they put their hand on the Bible, uh, when they take oath of office up there in the White House and they say they'll defend the Constitution of the United States and have done everything in their power to undermine the Constitution of the United States, it's time to ride them out there on rail. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Democrat. I don't care if it's Republican. Right. This is America. Yeah. 
Amen. And we need to understand. And so I think when it comes down to it, that Memorial Day calls upon us and beckons us and says to us, we need to remember where we come from. Remember why the blood was shed. Remember why we have these freedoms. And remember, we could lose them at any time. Yeah. Amen. The second thing I think that Memorial Day tells us is not just to remember, but to recognize. To recognize means to acknowledge, to express gratitude for. The Bible says that everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I think what Jesus meant when he said, and everything give thanks, that in riches or poverty, in sickness or in health, in life or death, in everything give thanks. Ain't that what you think it means? In everything give thanks. And I think that's certainly what it means, but can I say God's blessed you? Amen. And God has blessed America. Yes. Amen. Amen. And sometimes if things don't go our way, if we wound up tonight having to eat a chicken filet instead of T-bone, boy, we think God's just abandoned us. We think we can't get that and, and God ain't provided for it. Let me tell you something right now. God has blessed America and made us prosperous people. I look in this room today and I know you have homes. I know you have families. I know that you've got food. Amen. I know you do. Uh, you've got that today, and uh, uh, you've got a job. If, yeah. if you're willing to work, yeah. that's what we're that's what we're facing in the United States of America today. People don't want to work. Amen. Standing around wanting handouts. Uh, feel like we're entitled. Feel like we want no Uncle Sam to take care of us. Let me tell you something. Uncle Sam ain't never been able to take care of nobody. Amen. Uh, uh, we come out here and we work. That's what we do. But we feel like in time. I remember all this going on, man. We got a few stimulus checks. People thought that's what we need to live off of. Just be nice to get a stimulus check all the time. Uh, we can have a job if we want a job. They're hiring all over the place. There ain't no job shortage. There's worker shortage. Amen. The Bible said that man that won't work, he, would, he shouldn't eat. Amen. But they're eating high on the hog. You want to tell you why? Because government's buying the groceries. Now, I ain't got nothing against a working man that's getting a little help. Make no mistake about it. I think that's what it's for. I've got big problems getting somebody that won't strike a lick, wouldn't taste a pie in a pie factory, wouldn't give you air if you was in a jug. Right. And sitting there making more money than I am working a job 40, 50 hours a week. Amen. I've got big problems with that. You say, well, you say you don't love, I love America. I believe that America's still back. I believe it's still here. They still love people. The problem is we've forgotten. The problem is we've got not expressed our gratitude. I want you to realize we got the freedom to be able to work where we want to, go to college if we want to. Today, sitting at Elmira Baptist Church, uh, 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 preaching on these things right without government interference coming in here and telling us what we can and can't do. And you better be careful because it is a coming. When that COVID virus come through here, let me tell you something. They wanted to shut down as many churches as they could. Yeah. They did. Now, I'm not criticizing the church that had that shut down. We didn't know what to do. It was a different time, different virus. They wasn't no right way or wrong way to do it. I, 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 you just had to use your bad people's calling me and asking me what I was doing. And, and some went to help him transmitters and some went to streaming services. But listen, I live in Duck. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no streaming service here. The best I can do is record it for YouTube and go out at least to the interstate and maybe I get enough service to upload it to the web. There you go. <laughs> Otherwise, it stays on my phone for about a week. And nobody sees it. But the bottom line is there. So here in Elmira, we decided we'd stay open. We begin to separate. But I told this church, if you don't feel comfortable being here, you go ahead and stay home. Some of you did that. That's perfectly all right. This ain't a criticism of you. Uh, but I'll tell you what. Uh, they were trying everything. Even mentioned Elmira Baptist Church by name. They were going to come down here. And, and the health department was going to come down here. And they was going to shut us down. And I said, you send them on. Do you know what they did? Nothing. They never came. I was looking for them. They'll come when I ain't looking for them, but that's what they want me to do. They want me to try to shut every church down. Somebody went, nah, I'm going to tell you something. Government don't infringe upon church house. You understand? Amen. 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 I want you to realize, we, we uh, people have sacrificed our lives so we can come to church. We can worship God without any government interference. The Lord's blessed us. Uh, men and women have sacrificed their lives down through the ages and all this stuff. And truthfully, can I tell you something you may not like? We got more freedom than we deserve. Right. Truth be known, we got more freedom than we need. You say, why do you say that? 
Because we got so much freedom right now that we're giving it back. Here's, what, here's the way you give them back freedom. I've got the right to protest, so I'm going to protest. Here's what I'm going to protest. Government, you should pay for my college tuition. Yep. That's you giving freedom back. Yeah. That's you saying, I don't want the right to pay for my college. I want the government to pay for my college and pay for my education. Tell me what I can do and what I can't do. And that's us giving freedom yeah. back. We're standing here today. We're over there turning down statues of Robert E. Lee, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington. And those people don't have no idea why they're tearing them down. I watched that big bunch of idiots over there trying to tear down Robert E. Lee statue and they had straps and ropes and they're tugging and pulling and uh, you know, they're woke. They ain't strong. <laughs> and they're rocking, they're chipping away and everything. They finally got that thing come loose, pulled that Robert E. Lee statue right down on one of their own people like they killed him. <laughs> Robert E. Lee done it again, didn't he? <laughs> The truth of the matter is, uh, they don't even know why they're tearing it down. They won't tear down uh, statues of Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus? What did he do? They, they come around here today talking about white privilege. And I'll be, I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and address it because I don't care because I don't know what white privilege is. Amen. <laughs> I really don't. You, you tell me that, uh, uh, that white privilege is... is that I've got so high. Listen, I never owned a slave. I never had a plantation. I never had none of those things. Matter of fact, I barely make it now. I'm the slave of my own house. <laughs> Ain't nobody mowing my grass. Anybody you got, I mean, I got chickens out there. We have to go get our own eggs. Got a garden out there. We have to go harvest it ourselves. I don't know what you're talking about, white privilege. I live where some bunch of people do. Yeah. I'm telling you, what they're trying to do, let me tell you something, the United States, by default, is not a racist nation. It is not a racist nation. Hear me and hear me well. There was a period of time in the United States of America where there was division, there was segregation. But those times passed by, I understand that in some pockets of the United States of America, you may still see some racism. But I think as a whole, as a group, as the nation, that racism has been done away with and politicians do all they can to bring it back uh, because if they can cause division, they can win politically. Some of my best friends I've ever had in the world were black folk. Amen, hey man, they were. And uh, I've, I've worked with them. I enjoyed spending time with them. I, I mean, they were, uh, they're just people. Amen. You think when you get to heaven, it's just whites only? You think it's going to be segregated up there that, uh, that if you're white or if you're uh, uh, black or if you're uh, uh, brown, whatever you may be, uh, that we're all going to be separated up there because of death. This is a lie from the government of the United States of America to try to get you under their control in servitude. It was not what our soldiers died for. Amen. When you're in a foxhole, don't matter what color that man is beside Amen. you. These soldiers right now standing next to the Chinese and the Mexicans and the, uh, all these uh, that have come abroad, they're standing side by side, gun in hands, fighting for the very freedoms that we're undermining while they're fighting. Yeah. I want you to realize some of them today want the government to feed their meals and pay their bills for them. But you don't get the government to pay something without the government taking something. Yeah. You want the government to feed you your meals, then it becomes up to them what they decide to feed you. You want the government to pay your bills, then it becomes up to them about what kind of bills you need to have and what kind of car you need to drive. You say they'd never do that. Did they not just say when the gas shortage come that everybody needed an electric car? Yeah, they did. You don't think they're trying to infringe on you? We're standing around. Here's what we're doing in the United States of America. We stand in, <coughs> stand in our churches and talk to one another and we complain about it. We don't know nothing about it. We just find it something to complain about. I'm an American. I have a voice. You're an American. You have a voice. And it's about time the people of God stood up and said, hey, I'm about tired of this mess. Amen. We become foolish instead of thankful. Mm -hmm. We say we got freedom of speech, but you know that freedom of speech also includes the freedom to shut up. Yeah, that's right. right. And some people need to shut up. All these people standing here in Roe versus Wade because a document was leaked. And they're standing out here, you're taking away my rights. You're taking away my rights as a woman to protect my own body. Well, maybe you ought to have thought about your rights before you just run around in moral and climbed in somebody's bed. That's right. Amen. 
Hey, Amen. Yeah. Maybe you should have thought about your rights then before you brought a baby into the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Before you brought another life into the picture that you decided you wanted to kill to try to cover up your immorality. How about that? I'm not talking about uh, events where things happen. I'm talking about just uh, most of these people just want it. Most, I, they should have stood in Congress and said they believed a man could get pregnant. Yeah, sure <laughs> <did>. <laughs> I'm just a dumb mountain boy from North Carolina that somehow made my way up here to West Virginia. I'm graduated. <laughs> <laughs> but ain't no man ever got pregnant. Yeah. You say, how do you know? Because he don't have a womb. He don't have any way to be able to do that. I don't care what those coops are saying up there. They said, they said this in front of our Congress, and we're the dumb ones. Dumb, redneck, hillbilly, West Virginians that don't know up from down. I can tell you this. A man can't never have a baby. Amen. <laughs> Lord have mercy what's going on there. Freedom of speech. Shut up. Yeah. I'm not taking away your freedom to speak, but I'm saying with that freedom of speech is freedom to shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> Amen. We, 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 we got, you and I have got freedom of speech as long as we're saying something they agree with. Now, we've got to yeah. that much. Right, right. But the minute you say something they don't agree with, you don't have the freedom of speech. Yeah. Who do you think you are to disagree with this woke bunch of liberals running around the United States of America? I'll tell you something, I'm not no liberal. I'm not woke. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but if it means some of this stupidity that they're spewing out of their mouths that we've got to tear down all our city buildings and rebuild them new and green, I'm going to tell you something. That's stupid. Yeah. And we've got to get rid of cows because their flatulence is, is destroying our ozone. Well, that's amazing because I go all the way back in the Bible, clear over to, to back to the days of Egypt, and there was cattle around. Amen. Yeah. And somehow things have kept going up to this place and over and over again. But here we got these bunch of, of, of people that don't know nothing about nothing, and they're trying to tell us how we ought to live our life. My gracious, what's going on? We're free to protest. But we're not so free to protest that you can rob and burn down somebody else's building because you're protesting. Right, right. But it's okay if they do that, ain't it? Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. You want to tell you why these things are happening? Because we've lost our sense of gratitude for what God is here in the first place. Right. We've become unthankful and unholy. I want you to understand we forget that the privilege of freedom is a privilege we could lose just any day and they don't realize that from the very words of their mouth they are undermining the very freedom they have. Abraham Lincoln said in Gettysburg, Abraham Lincoln said that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we are here, we here highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from off the earth. Amen. Amen. He said, when we think about those that gave our life, we need to give them devotion. We need to give them gratitude. We need to give them thanks. Why? Right. So that this, this government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish off the earth. You let them go over there with a protest over in Afghanistan and see how long they want to stay. Right. See if they wouldn't rather have an M16 in their hand. Right. See if they want to stand there with a picket sign saying, hey, hey, we're against war, we're against war. See how many bullets it stop. Because that's not how we got there. You say you're a warmonger. I'm not a warmonger, but I do understand it took war to get us here. The Lord, the Lord, it, 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 it has down through the ages, these, these war. He had Aaron and uh, her lift up Moses' hand while war was going on for the people of God so they could establish and get what God promised them. And that's the way we're going to get it. Yeah. But we're going to lose it. We need to remember, we need to recognize, we need to repent. Why? Because we're unthankful and unholy. That's why. Amen. We need to repent bunch of spoiled brats feel like we're entitled. That's what we are. Amen. Oh, gas, gas got up $5 a gallon. No, I just took a trip. I'm going to tell you something right now. you got to have about 500 extra just pay for your fuel. Yeah. You know what happened? They'll take gas up about $5 and drop it down about four thirty, and we'll be satisfied. Yeah. It went come down from $5. Here it is. That's what they do every time, eh? Yeah. 
Amen. Shoot it way up there and we get all, oh, oh look how high gas is. And I remember, of course, some of you are older than I am. You remember it cheaper than I did. But I, I, I remember driving to school paying 89 cents a gallon for unleaded. Some of you say, I remember, boy, I wasn't that old. Y'all was cranking your cars in. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But 89 cent, I remember when it jumped out, you had that 89 cent fuel, you had that 99 cent fuel, and you had that dollar nine, that Supreme. Of course, back then, fuel was leaded, you know, it was. But daddy, my daddy, I remember my daddy said it from his mouth. I'll never pay a dollar nine for fuel. That's too much, that's too expensive. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to have a dollar nine right now, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then it goes up, then they, they raise it up to $2, and then drop it back to $1.89. Well, oh, yes, gas has come down. Yeah, but you're paying 89 cents a year ago, now you're paying a dollar more, and you're too dumb to realize it. <laughs> We've got to have a little bit of sense about us, huh? But we feel like the world owes us something. If you want, any, if you want anything, let me tell you what to do. Work for it. Yeah. Work for it. If you want anything, work for it. And you may work hard all your life, and your fingers to the bone, and die, and not ever have what you was working for, but yeah. that's the only way you're going to have anything. Work for it. I want you to know that. You say, why would I do that? Because you're free. You're free. Do that. I want you to understand. Uh, you think that this young nation from humble beginnings with people who had an idea that they could live free, that they could serve a true and living God, and they fought for it and they clawed and scratched. 14 and 15 year old boys leaving their daddy and mama with a rifle in hand. Uh, I'm talking about black powder rifles. Uh, and, and going out there and giving their life and, and, and uh, uh, fighting in wars. For an idea of freedom. Right. And here's the great nation that stands today. The freest nation in the world. Mm -hmm. United States. We forgot that people fought and died and God blessed and prospered. We need to get back from that, turn from our selfish ways and get back to what made us a great nation. We gotta get back to it. Yeah. Ain't no politician ever looked out for your best interest. Mm -hmm. Not a one. People died. And today there'll be flags up, tomorrow there'll be flags up, and there'll be, but it's just something you drive by on the road and you don't give it a second thought. Arlington Cemetery have flags on every grave. Mm -hmm. And we just overlook it and ignore it. But I won't say this, you realize that the greatest sacrifice ever made, Jesus Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. He left heaven to become humanity, lived a sinless life, and died and shed every drop of his blood so you could be free from the penalty of sin. No matter where freedom comes from, it always costs something. Yeah. It always costs blood. It always costs life. I want to tell you, Jesus came so you didn't just have American freedom. Jesus came so you could have eternal freedom. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for American freedom, but I know this according to Scripture that one of these days this world's going to burn away with fervent heat and American freedom ain't going to amount to hell of beans at that point in time. But I am glad uh, that Jesus gave me freedom, freedom from sin, freedom from death, freedom from hell. The Bible says, John 8, 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. We need to remember the sacrifice. We need to remember Jesus' sacrifice. We need to remember her sacrifice. We need to recognize uh, the sacrifice. We need to repent and be saved because of Jesus' sacrifice. We used to say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And you know what they say? Oh, we got to take it under God out. No, no, no. We are one nation under God. And if God ever takes his hand off of it, we'll no longer be Amen. one nation under God. Right. Right. Got that money. says, in God we trust. Well, we got to take that off of money. Well, that's probably a good idea because most of y'all are dependent on that money more than you're dependent on God. Right. Yeah. You know what a dollar is? Or a, a bill? It's not money. Yeah. It's an IOU. A dollar, you can read on it. This, this is, is, is a reserve note that uh, somewhere in the federal treasury, there's gold to back up that money. Yeah. You get that money in your hand. Oh, look, I got no. You don't got money. The money's over there. <laughs> United States got the habit of printing money when they want gold to back it. So you may have money right now, but you 
think is, is worth something. In reality, it ain't worth anything. Amen. It's a Federal Reserve note. You can have a you can have a wallet right now full of hundred dollar bills. It ain't money. It's all you. And when you cash them in, then the government says, I'll, "I'll back it up." Well, how long do you think that's gonna last? A few years ago, I watched the United States of America first time in history lose its credit rating. Mm -hmm. I, ain't even, I ain't even know we had, I ain't know we was running with the credit bureau. <laughs> I don't know if that comes from TransUnion or Equifax, but we lost our credit rating. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's gonna happen one day? China's gonna call in its debt. Yes, sir. You know what happens if China calls in, its, it calls in the debt today? We lose a third of the United States of America because they own it. Whether you like it or not, everything that was said by Donald Trump about China was right. Yeah. Sure. Now, I don't care who's in there. Truth's truth. I don't care who said truth. Right. You understand? Amen. They own most of our food. They own most of our food. Now, this, this ain't an endorsement for the next president to run. I'm not saying that. But I, I am telling you right now, China owns most of the United States of America right now. Right. Because we've sold ourselves down the river because we want to maintain credit rate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm for making stuff in America. Amen. 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 I like stuff made in the USA. I, I like people having jobs here. It makes sense to me. Yeah. I grew up down in uh, uh, Asheville, North Carolina. My, uh, me and my wife lived in Weaverville, North Carolina. My grandpa that just passed away was a farmer. What he was, lived down in Barnardsville, back side of nowhere, down in North Carolina. Back there, they built him a firehouse. He is the first fire chief ever in that volunteer fire department. <coughs> my grandmother rode the, uh, the uh, uh, emergency squad there, rescue squad. That's what she wrote, and so she was an EMT on it, and that's what they've done. And then the, the kids go to school. They come home from school. You know what they did? They hit the field. They started harvesting. Started planting. They ate off their own land. Right. They went to Walmart ten minutes up the road, where you just go to Walmart and pick your vegetables there. They had to go do it. They was going to eat. That's what they had to do. It's the way things work. You get off a bus, you go straight to the garden. My grandpa had uh, 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 grow down in North Carolina was uh, the tobacco belt. They grow tobacco down there, and I've spent many a days of my life. I sitting on the back of a tobacco setter. Spent many a days of my life out in a tobacco field chopping it down, sir, because it was their income. It's the way they done it. It's all the way they got Christmas money. The government decided back several years ago they're going to come in and take all them allotments from them farmers and everything, give them a payout, and now you go down through there, and there ain't no farms anymore, and there ain't no, uh, nobody live off the land anymore. We were talking about bread shortage, wheat shortage, which is coming because most of it came from the Ukraine. You better just acknowledge that and understand that and throw you some in the freezer to learn how to make bread. Yeah. Yeah. They said, well, I guess we can make bread. I said, yeah, how many people do you think the United States of America knows how to make bread? <laughs> If it ain't some of them whopping biscuits, they won't be able to make them. <laughs> they can't slap it on the counter and sink and whop, whop, open it up. But that's where we're going. People don't know how to live. People don't know how to survive. I, I'm telling you something right now. Ain't nothing wrong. Listen, I'm, I'm not a fear monger. God's in control. God's always been in control. I don't have a bunker because fear won't let me get one. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It don't hurt you to save up a few groceries for a few weeks. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, uh, some people say, I got groceries for three years. Well, good for you. I, I don't know if you need it that long. Jesus may come back when you need to eat these groceries. And then you're going to let the devil's crowd eat it. So you might as well just eat it now. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with saving up. So I, I want you to understand, freedom's not free. Freedom costs something. Blood brought my freedom. Blood bought my freedom. Somebody had to die. Right, yeah. Somebody had to take my place. Yeah. I'm thankful for freedom. I'm an American and I'm proud to be one. I still pledge allegiance to the American flag. I was down in, I was down in Charleston, South Carolina. And I got to hurry. I know it's getting on your lunch time. <laughs> I was down in Charleston, South Carolina. What I like being about down there? There's not a lot like about, about being down there. Grandbaby number one. <laughs> but all these Air Force bases around. So we standing out there, man. You you'd be in the shopping mall on F-16 flyover, man. That just swells my heart with pride. Yeah. I watch these uh, Apache uh, gunships flying over in formation. I was like, yeah. that's a scary sight right there. Man. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was awesome because I'm on the right side, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I watch one of them uh, uh, airplanes of transport that uh, 
drops them Navy SEALs, put, drops them in the ocean, come flying with his belly right along the, the ocean there. And I was like, hey man, I'm proud to be an American, hey amen. Right. It's better, better than Putin over there having to uh, walk to the gas station, get a jug of gas, keep his tank around. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't send them with enough, so he's over there ciphering it out of cars. Like, let's get this tank going. We got a battle war going on. Now he just lost all his tanks. Now he pulled out one from the 1950s he's going to use, so I hope that's good for him. You know, be, I'm proud to be an American, ain't you? Yeah. I'm glad that we God, God's blessed us. I'm, I'm glad that. But greater still, I'm not going to live forever. I ain't going to live in America forever. And even, even if the Lord tarries is coming and I live in America as long as I live, there's coming a day where Trump's going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm just a pilgrim and stranger here. I'm glad he let me live in America. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad I wasn't born in Russia. I'm glad that I wasn't born in communist China. I'm glad God let me live in the United States of America and experience the freest nation in the world, even though we've got so free that we've got completely stupid. But the bottom line is, thank God for the freedom we had, the freedom to worship, the freedom to pray, the, the opportunity just to load up on a Sunday morning. Mom and Dad, take me to church where I can meet a Savior that loved me and died for me. Thank God for all the things yeah. he's done. I'm proud to be in America, but greater still, I won't always live here. I'm proud that I'm a child of God. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm going somewhere where I'm going to have real freedom. Ain't no politician ever going to take that away from us. Because Jesus paid for it. Yeah. And a real future in heaven. I wonder if you know real freedom. Now certainly we need to acknowledge the freedom we have here. But this ain't real. This is, right. this is temporary. Yeah. And we need to fight for it as long as we can fight for it. There's real freedom. Real freedom comes to a man named Jesus Amen. that faced a battle in Gethsemane against Satan himself. Amen. So much so that he was in an anguish. The Bible says his sweat became, as it were, great drops of blood as he's praying and winning this battle for us. Calvary was just the fruition of the battle that he won in Gethsemane. Yeah. When he got done praying in Gethsemane, he went on up Calvary's hill. He's spread his arms wide. They drove nails in his hands and his feet. They pierced his side and every drop of blood Jesus had shed. But victory was secured that day. Freedom right. was secured Amen. that day. That's real freedom. Hey. If you don't know that freedom today, you say, preacher, what are you talking about? What I'm talking about is our soldiers, our Savior, did just what was their duty to do. What do you think your duty is? What is your response to what they've done for you and I that we have freedom today? Let's stand with our heads bowed, eyes closed.